On today's episode, we have Lana Rodriguez from the Lana Rodriguez group, Keller Williams, out of Colorado Springs, Colorado. This episode has some great tips about client events because Lana absolutely crushes at doing them. Check it out. All right, folks. Today, uh, this will be fun. Super cool friend of mine, Lana Rodriguez from the Lana Rodriguez group at Keller Williams in Colorado Springs. What is going on, lady? So neat. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. And of course, congratulations with your own podcast. It's about time. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yes. It's, it's, it's. And I'm very, very honored. Well, uh, guess what? So as of 27th of April, Colorado Springs is um, going back to work. The stay home order is being relieved. And really? Yeah. 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 Finally. Finally. Uh, that lasted from approximately March 20th, I want to say, or so March 25th, 20th, that's when we got into the homestay order. And it's been interesting, uh, just like the real estate market in jail has been interesting, but we persevered. Um, we are our, we're getting allowed to stay uh, back home to do the showings. And uh, yeah, actually, just first day back in the office, just preparing for things to jumpstart. And uh, there's only me, our admin and my husband, the entire office is to ourselves. And there's about 100 <laughs> agents in our Keller Williams office. When was the last time you went to the office? To the office? Um, just about just about a month ago. Yeah, same. Yeah. Same. You guys, uh, how, how, are you, how are you guys doing in Cali? Cali was crazy at first because we weren't essential. And then we were. Mm -hmm. And... For me, honestly, like my guys on my team are taking, and I'm not joking you, two, three listings every day. Yeah. I have so much inventory right now. It's the most I've ever had, but it's also scary because here I am with like 50, 60 listings. Yep. And I have that many for a reason because they aren't selling as fast as, as they normally do. So that's, uh, I'm seeing days on market in increase a lot for us and uh you know once we get out of this i mean that's so positive that you guys are opening up back monday february <laughs> or, it's on april 27th when i say february I was, yep um, yep uh and then as far as uh spas and salons can open i believe may 1st and then restaurants slowly can open up may 15th congratulations is that a thing from the governor or from the local from the governor of colorado mm -hmm. Good for him. Yeah. So, um, so we will see. Um, as far as my team, we currently have seven team members. Uh, we were at 12 team members just about 90 days ago, but I guess it's better that way. You know, I'm not complaining. Yes. We have five licensed agents, including myself and my husband, and we are the rainmakers on the team. And then we have two support staff. We have full-time videographer. Uh, luckily, he's going to be able to go and, work and get all the listing videos done and pictures because that was put on, on hold too kind of and then we have full-time client care manager who takes care of our clients yeah, right. Popeyes, or shall i say used to do Popeyes. um our listing game is looking pretty strong currently we have about 25 listings in the pipeline to be listed within the next 60 days great uh as far as buyers game i'll be honest uh, we probably have right now, uh, let me just count, maybe seven, eight buyers currently under contract. Uh, where usually we have about 20, 25 buyers under contract at the same time. Um, Colorado Springs is a big military town. We have five military installations. So um, right now the military moves have been put on hold till June 30th. Um, originally, as you know, it was May 11th, right? Yeah. And now it's extended to June. 30th and it's still it's still in the air there's still a lot of what if a lot of our military clients who are going to move here they they don't know if they're going to move here anymore so they kind of taking it day by day and so do we um there's some families who actually can take um an exception for example we have dual military family who are moving here and they they got accepted they can come here in may right, right. so we just we're just kind of tackling each plan one by one um yeah so have so things have slowed down for you, uh, you know, about half, which is normal. Is what from my conversations is pretty normal to what's happening, right? Is everybody's down about half, uh, and it'll bounce back up. I mean, shit, if you guys are up live next week, I mean, that's how it's going to be popping. It it will be, it will be, but you know, like I, I don't know how about you guys, because you guys run uh, some big, pretty big teams. Um, 
I personally had kind of not analysis paralysis, but like, you know, you know, the, the regular advertisement that we used to do on Facebook and social media, and we don't do any, like we do some of the Facebook paid ads right now. Um, but like advertising to, to the majority when they are in their homes without a job, it just was unorthodox for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, we've been really focusing on our client database, which we always do in general. Um, I'm sure you already heard, but if you're not heard, I'm just going to brief you in and I'm going to brief our audience. So I'm a big on client events. That's just my bread and butter. That's how I do my marketing. And on a, on a good year, we do, you know, six to eight good client events. You know, five of them are very big and another one, small ones in between. Well, clearly, um, with the, with this, all this going on with the COVID, we had to cancel that. We had to cancel our 300 client uh, appreciation brunch that is already actually, by the way, paid in full. Oh. And for me, I was like, oh shit, what am I going to do? How are we going to, you know, get out of the situation? And um, you remember when that, when those posts started about the shortage of toilet paper and I saw that post first in our local Costco, there is like a line and I was like, that's a joke. This is somebody just making fun of, you know, and no, it was not a joke. So when that all started, we've been touching clients and just reaching out, hey, what do you need? And we delivered up to goods like baby wipes, toilet paper, um, geez, bread, bread, flour, rice, right? And then when we kind of maxed out on that, and so I was like, okay, what are we going to do? And the same weekend, Denver already got on lockdown. Denver, Denver's one hour away from us. We're in Colorado Springs. And we knew that, that you know, it's going to come to Colorado Springs. So within three days, we bought, um, let me see, 280 frozen pizzas from Costco. It was a nice, nice four pack. So they can eat it all in one night if they have a big family or spread it out throughout the week. Came with the four pizzas, <clears throat> $9.99 per, per pizza, right? So it was just, just around $3,000 expense. And my entire team, um, back then it was eight of us, we, in three days, we delivered these pizzas to clients' houses. Awesome. And people love that, right? Dude, absolutely. So what we also did before, uh, our client care manager, another assistant, she worked the phones and she called each client, which was about 410 clients who live actively in the area, and we asked for their permission. I was like, would you be okay? Um, some said, no, we're good, because we have to respect their privacy. They don't want anybody at their door, right? Because remember, people are in a different mindset. They, everybody treats the situation differently. But 280, we're totally like, yeah, let's do this. Out of 280, I delivered personally about 50 pizzas myself. And uh, <laughs> usually I don't do that anymore, but I really wanted to because it's actually escalated my love meter and my happiness meter to this much, you know, because having these conversations with, with the clients on their porches, it was priceless, dude. Like, they're like, how are you doing? Like, what, like, I was like, well, what's going on? I was like, everything is going to be fine, you know? So, um, yeah. And then Wednesday night we finished and then Thursday stay home order took place. So it was a perfect timing. Right. And in my head, my marketing was done for the next 30 days. Yeah. Right. So here we are, uh, end of April, May for May. I had another thing planned that I had to cancel. Um, usually every month of May, I gather all the ladies. Um, it's not only mom exclusive event, even though I call it mom's night out, whatever, but I had, a, I usually rent out painting with a twist. You know, whether the ladies come enjoy the beverage and then they paint something, you know, for, for a few hours and it's all the client events we host is fully complimentary. Right. That's where my, my marketing money goes. So that had to be canceled, right? And now I'm thinking, what can we do? Because restaurants are closed, stay-at-home order takes place. So do you want to guess what I'm, what I'm going to be doing in two weeks? I, have no, I can't wait to hear. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so this is um, what we're going to do. We're renting out a taco truck, okay? And we're, do we're doing the drive-through taco party in our office parking lot on May 9th. May 9th strategically lands between the Cinco de Mayo, which is May 5th, and Mother's Day, May 10th. So uh, we, uh, one, of our, one of our teammates, Isela, somehow she got a mysterious deal. Um, so it's gonna be like a price, uh, $1 per taco. I've uh, never heard of that before, but I, mean, <laughs> I was like, great. And we're expecting so far per RSVP rate, about to give out 3,000 tacos in that day. Awesome. Um, we created a Google Sheet. It's going to go to all our clients. 
uh, we're doing the max 20 tacos per, per household, right? Um, and what they're gonna do, they're gonna drive, drive through, pick up their orders, can be already prepackaged. Uh, we're also gonna give out like flour, bottle one for mother. We ordered some uh, like little goodie bags for the kids. And I think it's gonna be a pretty good event as long as the weather cooperates. I, you know, that's why it's so much fun. That's why I had to have you on here because you're so creative with this stuff. And every time that we talk and I hear about these ideas, because they're all awesome. Number one, they're all awesome. Number two, I want to come to one of your parties because you're the expert, right? But the number three, it always makes me think about my business because my business is vastly different. I'm a lead guy, 100% leads, like leads, leads, leads. Um, I was thinking, I was like, what if I would have done that? How much money would I have saved? And, you know, more good times would I've had meeting uh, people. So you're so right. Um, and you know, one thing what I always share, uh, if I don't forget, um, you have to identify your selling style, right? Especially for the new agents, because I know um, your your agent circle is huge and some of the new agents gonna watch this and they're gonna, you know, maybe still just try to discover themselves in this real estate world. Well, you have to identify your selling style and what's gonna work for you or not. Well, um, as you know, I'm an immigrant, so my English is not perfect and it probably never will be, right? And very quickly, I noticed that if I have to do a cold call, I'm going to fail, dude. I'm going to suck because my Russian accent comes out. I, I start sounding ridiculous, right? And then uh, when, I, when I used to door knock in the beginning of my career, and for some of the people who are watching, I've been, uh, this is my sixth year doing real estate. Uh, for been doing real estate in Colorado for five years, two years solo, and then the last three years I've been running a team. And door knocking, like it's not, I like... <laughs> It's, it's demor demoralizing to me. I was like, I'm door not once. People slam doors in my face. I'm like, I'm not doing it. But what I realized, if I can have a face-to-face -face interaction with somebody, like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read their body language. I'm going to look in their eyes. And I, most of the time, I'm going to get on their level, whoever they are, right? Who, 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 whoever they are. And that's how, like, if I can be around people, that's how I shine, right? So that's why the client events make so much sense for me. Um, at first, at first, I used to do like a, you know, private coffees and private lunches. But then uh, what happened? I had two kids, right? And my client database grew from 50 people who I was able to comfortably visit throughout the year to right now 410 people, which is I physically just can't. Yet, when it's a client event, this is what I do. This is my... As I have it so systematic, every client event, I stand up front and I'm the first person they see and I'm the last, last person they see, okay? Uh, sometimes I miss out on the entire event because I just greet and host and, you know, say goodbyes, but that's, that's my job, okay? And then my team is in the, during the event, they're entertaining, they're doing whatever they need to do. Um, but that's, like, that's so important to me, right? That's how, that, and that's what works for me. And if somebody's great on the phone or so super great converting online leads, Zillow, like, good for them. That's great. I mean, yeah, it just makes me always think, right? So, and you got, you got all your touches in. Like, they're already done in a great way. You got all your touches in, right? With most agents, like, everybody has told you know, every piece of advice from everybody, call your database, call your sphere. And, you know, when I just think about it, and I really wonder how many agents actually did that. 20%, right? Not, not you hit everybody. You've hit everybody one way or the other, provided a huge value. The deposits you make with people, they're going to pay off. I mean, they have been paying off for a couple of years now, right? Just these deposits, a good job. Well, it, it has been paying off, you know, and for somebody, for somebody to be like, oh, climates never work or like it works because my, my organic growth is, is there. So I, Brian and I, my husband and I, he was active duty military and we moved here from Texas brand new. And I used to be in retail before real estate and I really wanted to have a first kid. He didn't. So we had to compromise. And he literally told me, if you want to go going to get pregnant you're going to go back to work i'm like wait a second that works the other way around doesn't it uh but long story short so i got my real estate license and i got pregnant at the same time my first year of business being brand new to colorado i sold 31 property 31 property this big pregnant like worked up to 42 weeks um even even actually did some deals 
uh, when I was uh, when my epidural kicked in. But that's a different story. We'll leave it for later. <laughs> the second year, second year as a solo agent, I had I did 119 transactions. Wow, right? with a one year old. Mm -hmm. 100 yeah with a newborn at home brought my mom from mother russia to take care of the baby because no no daycare could have supported that schedule that i needed right yeah and then at the end of that the second year i actually told my husband i think i'm losing it dude i i don't know what i'm gonna do and uh, him being a military gentleman he's like well you need to get more organized i was like no i need a fucking team <laughs> <laughs> you know and that's how i started the team but see back then uh i didn't have a proper guidance so I, I just brought on agents because I was just so drowning in, in help and whatever. I did not brought good admin st staff. You know, that's what you need to do first, like a good apps manager and stuff. Um, and then as a team, we did 100, 189 transactions and the next year, 204. And last year we did 230 transactions. Right. And we, yeah. And all we're doing is client events and then pop buys, AKA client recognition gifts in between. That's all we do. And it and works. your phone just rings. Your phone just rings. It does, it does. And you know what? So for, for, for people who are like, well, okay, it's not going to work in my market. This is how I do it and this is why I do it, right? It's very simple to me. As you know, you and I ourselves, people who are market, marketers, right? Um, and that's what we do. Now, the minute somebody gets into real estate, their phone starts ringing from miscellaneous companies, you know? People want to sell you services because they think you just need it. And I invest, like in the beginning of my career, I, I, I was with Zillow. I was with Trulia. And now Zillow is Trulia, whatever. I was with Realtor.com. It just, for me, it just didn't pay off, right? So whenever you get upsold, like I hate to be upsold. Like right now, if I see a, like somebody's going to call me, I'm not even answering the phone, right? And I hate presenting myself like this to a consumer, because, you know, unfortunately, us realtors don't have the best rep in town. Uh, we, it is what it is, right? It is what it is. So the being authentic with my client events, like, it gives me opportunity to market myself at least five times before the next client event, right? And it's in a way to provide providing value, right? Yes, because the message, hey, how are you doing? How's the family? You know, like, it, it's going to go only that long. But I'm like, hey, have you received my invite? So what we do with these client events, right? Mailers, we do the mailers because I'm a firm believer in it's something tangible. They receive it, they open it, they slap it on their fridge or whatever, right? They put it on their desk. They're going to be looking at it. They're going to be thinking about me and my, my group. Uh, we do the, we have a private Facebook group. And if for everyone watching, if you don't have a private Facebook group for your clients, you're missing out. It's a completely free opportunity on Facebook to gather all your clients and message them or communicate your messages like every day if you want to, you know, we'd, I don't do it every day, but every week I post something or if it's something important and like, it's all your clients. I'm sure. Do you have, do you guys, have, do you have this for your agents? I, I, I have a Facebook group for the brokerage and I have a Slack group workspace for the team. So we're talking about like a private group, right? Whereas it's only, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you'll be surprised how many people don't have that. You guys have to have that. Um, and then I cre we create a private event there everybody gets invited and then i get to market there they're gonna see my face but it's not not lana is not saying anything annoying to just talking about value prop about the event right then we'll do the email and then we'll do a personal touch so each agent needs to either call or text i usually text because i really don't like to talk on the phone just to be honest you know it is what it is but i always get a text and then, then all the facebook message hey are you coming i would love to see you and uh Okay, event passes. Week later, guess what? We're preparing for another event. And our clients, they're used to that. They're used to that and it's not annoying to them, right? But what it gives me, it gives me the opportunity to stay on top of mind in front of them all the time. That's super good. That's super good. I've tried, man. What happened last time? Like eight people came out of like a thousand. The, 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 the time before that, we called all our past clients and i said you know i want to buy a nothing bunt cake i don't know if you have that out there in colorado oh yeah we have that yummy yeah, um so i'm gonna buy you know that for our, for our past uh, customers would you like one yes great this is when they're gonna come what flavor do you want oh i want red velvet great we'll buy it so i bought i don't know 150 of them but if the people the rsvp was with 150 only half showed up 
So now I had 75 extra bunt cakes. And not only cost me a bunch of money, but we were like going, walking down the street trying to pass them out, right? So, uh, yeah. but yours are different because yours are more fun, right? Like come, have brunch. Like what, what have been some of your most successful uh, client events that you've done? Okay, so yeah, good, good call. Um, the most successful are usually events where you can incorporate the kids. Okay. Any event where the parents can bring the kids, like it's, 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 it's blowing out, blowing out. So in March, April, we usually do the Easter brunch, right? Um, complimentary mimosas, Easter buffet. We have like a little jazz band playing. Wow. That's, yeah. That's pretty good attendance. You know, about 300. Well, this year we had 200 adults and about hundred kids are sweet Great. So then, so, uh, for mother's day, I do something smaller maybe 50, 60 ladies show up for Mother's Day event. Uh, then sometime in June, July, I always track for a kid's movie premiere to come out. Um, last year, it was a Toy Story. So oh. our entire team dressed up in a Toy Story costumes and we hosted three, three movie, uh, movie times um, because, you know, kids have different nap times or whatever. Sure, so, sure. Good call, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's been about 600, 600 attendees in one day we hosted. Um, then let's see. Uh, well, I'll tell you, but I'm going to tell you about the outline and then I'll tell you what I did last August and then I'm, I'm not going to do this again. But um, let's see. In the fall, I go a little bit heavy in the fall and I'll tell you why. You know, in real estate world, people think that in the fall, the business slows down a little bit, you know, going into the winter. And that's why we market a little bit heavier. Um, because during the winter winter month, we want people to be constantly thinking of us. And when the spring comes, it's going to blow up. Okay. And it's, it worked every single time. Uh, the biggest client event with attendance, nearly 700 people, two years in a row, is our pumpkin patch. I don't know how or why, right? But it just works. Um, we rented out entire pumpkin patch. Uh, we have lunch and attractions and like little petting zoo. And I'm telling you, people come with families, with grandpas, with neighbors. Like, it's huge. It's huge. You just ran out of pumpkin patch. That's such a mm -hmm. good idea. Yeah. yeah. And it's a, it's a, it's a, like, it's, it, it's cost about $10 per person because they, everyone lives with a pumpkin, right? Um, but it's been the biggest. And the funny fact, uh, not last year, but year before, I was pregnant with my second one. And uh, we hosted it on the, his due date. Uh, like I literally was um, wearing like this big pumpkin shirt. People are like, are you going to pop? Like right now, I was like, I hope I'm going to pop because I need to go in labor. Yeah. <laughs> one week later, but I stood on my feet for about six hours straight, you know, working it. Um, so, so then after the pumpkin patch, we do the pies, the pies, and we do the Costco pies. Um, I, I started with the pies. And my team doesn't let me stop the pies. Cause I'm like, ah, is pies getting too annoying? They're like, no, 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 no. Because when we were brand new to Colorado Springs, Brian and I, my husband and I, uh, I, I was like, what am I gonna do? You know, uh, back then I was with Remax um, and I was at this Remax meeting and there was all these top producing agents, right? And I'm like, I'm gonna sink. I'm not gonna make this in this business, you know? Cause I'm just this younger girl and all these people are like sharks. I'm a shark too now. Ha. <laughs> you are, yeah. <laughs> uh, but long story short, uh, I created a free Facebook event in some of the Facebook groups, whatever. I got RSVP for about um, 85 pies. I went to Costco, about 85 pies, and I drove around town for four days delivering pies to complete strangers. I'm not making this up. It's a true story. My husband thought I was crazy. My Remax brokerage laughed at me back then. They're like, you're going to do this? I'm like, yeah, watch me. And you know what? It was hard, and uh, but out of 85, I got about five A++ clients, people who are still with me. Uh, we did multiple transactions, we have three, four transactions to this point, because it's already six years in the business, right? And now, I no longer deliver pies. I do a pie party, uh, and people come to the office and pick up the pie. So I, I can relate to your um, the bundle of cake story, um, but see, Though those cakes, they're pricey, right? What is it like, twenty or thirty dollars per piece? Yeah, the thirty bucks. Yeah. Yeah. See the pie, the Costco pies. Um, the pumpkin pie is five ninety nine. All right, and then uh, sometimes we do pecan or apple, and it's just maybe fifteen dollars. So our cost is relatively low, and if we have any extras, 
which is going to drive maybe delivery to clients' houses or whatnot. So we always have the exit strategy for that. But yes, um, but this is what we also started. So we're doing the pie party, but then I had a kid, right? I had a second kid, so I have two kids. And you know, the Santa Christmas time is always special. And every time I would go to the mall to take a picture with a Santa, like it would never happen because by the time we stand in line, one of the kids threw up, another kid starts freaking out and we have to leave. I mean, you are the dad of two little precious girls. You know what I'm talking yeah. about, right? So then I was like, I'm gonna do my own freaking Santa event. So I combined a pie party with the pictures with Santa and uh, it's happening the week, uh, the week, the Sunday before Thanksgiving. And they get the pictures with Santa as a hard copy and also um, like a online copy in time to get, send out their holiday cards, right? And that's been fantastic. We host it in our office. Uh, we do it like almost half of the day events. So they can come at their own different times, right? And we have little snacks and whatnot. So that's been great, all right? So then this is another last event what I host, um, Client Appreciation Gala. And this is how it all came about. So when Brian yeah, and I, I and I, <laughs> well, of course it cannot compare to the big party you guys are throwing at, you know, at your brokerage, because I'm, someday I'm going to come to that, too. Oh, yeah, that's cool. I mean, I'm just a guest. That's Sam and Oliver. They and Corey, they do it big, man. But, uh, Isn't it like last year, I rented out a port or something? Like a port? The, the ship? Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it, it's, there's a port building, and the last yeah. two years in a row, they burned it out. I mean, it's the only place that can hold that many people. Massive. Dude, someday I'll get to that level, but... <laughs> I'm just gonna come and party with you guys. Okay, but uh, long story short, so you know, Brian and I, we moved to Colorado, and during the winter months, we see all these people going to all these events, and we didn't have that many friends. And I was like, well, it would be nice to have something nice to go to. So I just created my own client appreciation gala. Cool. And, uh, yeah, so this year was the only first year where we didn't do it formal. Usually, we rent out a ballroom in a hotel, we do a complimentary bar, complimentary dinner buffet with uh, appetizers and meat cuts. We do a DJ, we do some kind of entertainment. And year before last, year before last, we did a great Gatsby party and it was a killer. It was a killer. I even have a video for that to show you if you want. It was so amazing. People loved dressing up. This year we did something different. Uh, this year, instead of December, we did it in January. Instead of Saturday, we did it on Friday. And we did an 80s theme, 80s theme. And our attendance was cut in half. Uh, a lot of people could not make it from work. A lot of people didn't want to dress up. So it was a good lesson learned. We still have an attendance for about maybe like 150, 180 people. But usually our parties are 300 people. That's so great. So let's right? say that our, well, no, let's say. So a uh, newer agent, right, who wants to not go the Sunit way of buying every lead on the planet and wants <laughs> to go the Atlanta way of doing. Yeah. Events, where where do they start? Okay, good question. It can be, I know it whatever I do may sound very pricey, but it's actually not, okay? And you can start anywhere from actually hosting a wine and cheese party at your own house. Okay, as simple as that. Wine and cheese party at your own house. And you know what? Well, right now it's hard to talk about that because of the social distancing and all That's that true. other crap. But like people like that, people like to feel special, be invited to go somewhere, right? And especially if it's like wine and cheese, like it's so, it can be so inexpensive. Like go to Costco, buy every cheese platter they have and buy every wine they have, okay? And just decor it super nice. And people love that kind of exclusivity, right? And if you don't have to pay for the venue, you don't have to pay for the bartender and whatnot, right? If you, if you don't wanna do this inside your house, you can host a happy hour, okay? If you find a happy hour place with like, let's say five hour drinks, okay? And like appetizers, you don't, just order a bunch of apps. Don't let them, don't let clients order their own apps. If they want to order their own apps, they pay. You do the spread, okay? Because usually a happy hour appetizer is $5. And then five, five, five dollar drink, you host it for a few hours, right? And then if my majority, it's going to be the ladies who's going to come and the ladies, if you are the female agent, is that's who you want anyway? Because the ladies are most of the time the main decision makers, right? Yeah, uh, my house, that, that's for sure. <laughs> I, 
And, you know, also another very, very good way is to partner up with local businesses. For example, if stars align, if stars align, uh, in June, we had planned this June, we had planned to host like a dad nights out or gentleman's night out. We never hosted that before exclusively because we always do it for the ladies and they're, they're always like, what about us? I'm like, yeah, what about you? Uh, so we are partnering up with a local brewery okay and for two hours we want exclusively to the to ourselves or at least if they have like a big space and we're gonna pick up the beer tab right it's gonna be like a dark and light beer but they can hook it up because they do make their own beer right and you tell them hey i'm gonna bring like i don't know 50 or 40 men to your brewery they're gonna know about you they're gonna come back and um you can do it that way as well that's a great idea too that's really good the breweries even the local wine, you know, vineyards, yeah. always so good idea. So, man, that's you got my mind spinning right now. No uh, joke. Stop it. So you, so we were talking about this off, off air. Like, so you, you're one of the first people I know that have been on TikTok, right? Um, Are we really gonna go that way? Oh my yeah, god! But you're super creative. You did really good. Um, without diving into the TikTok yeah. black hole. Um, are, are you having fun? I am. I am. If, if I may share with our audience how it all started, so people don't think that I'm crazy, like my husband and my team, because they're like, <laughs> okay, okay, you need to calm down. I was like, you guys don't understand, right? Even though my husband, he told me about TikTok, he heard it from Gary Vee. Gary Vee was preaching TikTok like two years ago, but you know, it was, it was a teenager platform and still is very heavily populated, but this is what happened from, to me. Uh, I'm very, very active on Facebook. Facebook is my life. You know, have you seen that commercial? Chipotle is my life. Well, Facebook is my <laughs> life. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, it's like my CRM, all my business pages, my client groups, you know, connections with uh, amazing entrepreneurs like yourself is all on Facebook. Well, three weeks ago, four weeks ago now, my Facebook got hacked and I got completely locked out, like done. Uh, they, on Sunday night, they changed the passwords, they changed the verification number and email. What so, assholes? Why would they do I'm that? telling you, <laughs> all right? And I was like, oh shit. So clearly I could not get it through myself. And then uh, with Sharon's and Tristan's Afimata's help, they finally got me through Facebook, Facebook, you know, cause I have connections. And it took that Facebook to figure out for two weeks. And I will be completely honest with you. I got so depressed. Yeah. Like my hands were tied, not only because of the COVID situation and I had to stay home with my two children who were driving me completely insane at times, not all the time, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I was like, what, the, what do I do, right? And I'm just be honest, I already lost my momentum with Instagram. I have like 700 followers and that's what I had for the last five years and that's it. Like, I don't know how to do Instagram and I'm probably never going to know. So I was like, TikTok, okay. So I downloaded Strictly for fun, did a couple of videos, whatever. And I was just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And then I just got so bored. So I started doing some videos. I put my kids bed, to bed at night. My husband also to bed or whatever, when he's like working. And I would sneak into my basement and I would do these TikTok videos, right? And I was like, oh, I'm getting some likes, you know, because it kind of get, gets a little bit addicted. But then I have one video, then it's actually went viral or whatever. <laughs> cool. and I was like, wait a second, I'm on TikTok famous. No, but uh, in all reality, I did a stupid video with one of their dances, you know, because they say use their dances, use their popular songs that are trending, which I did. And I just did a funny little caption, um, like literally that everybody I guess can relate. When mom joins uh, TikTok during quarantine, we're like, wow, we're never going to make it. Let's go back to Facebook. And it's like this little funny dance. Yeah. It's currently almost at 70,000 views. Wow, cool. Look, you're trending. And after that, I was like, oh, shit, oh, shit. I'm gonna do <laughs> and, but, okay, in all reality, how do I use TikTok and why do I do this? Um, it's not a waste of time. It's a great content creator, okay? The app is so easy to use, all right? Um, you can do whatever you want. You don't have to do the dance. You don't have to compete with, with the algorithm because that's a completely different situation. But what I did for me, right, because uh, there's some other videos that kind of took off and they were kind of semi-viral, but there's also a lot of videos that I did funny ones with like moms or stay at home. 
and what it does when you edit your video on TikTok. It gives you all the tools. It's super easy, right? And it's 15 seconds. And it, after you post it, it automatically downloads it on your phone. So you have this piece on your phone, right? And remember, when we were sitting at home, okay, I already talked to all my A plus and my VIP clients, right? I already know how they're doing, but I still need to be communicating. So then a week after, I'll send them a funny video. I was like, hey, here's a joke of the day. And they're like, oh my God, this is hilarious, right? So I started using these little, little clips in many different aspects. I would post something on Instagram. Now I post something on Facebook. And clearly, if it's like a bit, you know, um, crazy, I'm not going to post it on Facebook because there's a lot of professional connections, but I'm probably going to post it on Instagram or I may not even post it anywhere. I'm just keeping it private and then I send it to somebody in private. That's so cool, man. Good job on that. Thank you. I'm making Thank the videos. You. I'm, I think I made two and it was probably both of one of my babies. Um, how was, since your lockdown is going to be over in a couple of days, how was it working at home with the kiddos? <laughs> oh my god so <laughs> it's been it's been hard so we also we have a four-year-old and we have one one and a half year old boy and the four-year-old she's she's losing it like she she's crazy you know i'm like i'm wondering where did she get it from well i guess for me and my husband but uh and you know this is a trick what i noticed like i know i know we probably have it a little better than some people in our country right but we still go through the emotional roller coaster. Like I know I had thoughts, you know, um, I actually, I'm going to be very transparent with you right now. Uh, when, when this is all started, I actually let go of one of my agents and for some people who know me very closely, I never let go of anyone. And if I do, then I go back and I cry about it. And that's exactly what happened. I made a decision, um, that I will, you know, let him go and I thought about it for 24 hours I thought I wanted, wanted to see if I feel any different and I didn't and for some of the team leaders who are watching this right now they may relate you know because during this time like your agents need to support you more than any time before you just like for you you know you're the team leader and the brokerage leader you have so many responsibilities on your shoulders and this agent you know he's a great guy he's been with me for a little over a year he's actually was our videographer and he became an agent and uh, he he said something during the bad timing for me personally and i just clicked in my head and i thought about it for 24 hours and i was like i don't think you're no longer the right fit for for the team and yes i felt super sad about it and i still do but at the end of the day right now we need to stay very very strong together okay and not not get upset over pity bullshit that somebody said something, somebody did something because there's people jobless. There's dual income families without jobs. And yep. if you're going to complain about receiving email from me at one o'clock in the morning or uh, receiving a text before nine o'clock in the morning, I'm sorry. Yeah. Good, 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 good. Uh, so once the, so come next week outside of work, where's the first fun place that you think you're going to go now that the lockdown is over? Okay, honestly, this is what I'm planning to do. Okay, <clears throat> so I want to get together with my team. Uh, I want to get together with my team. To be honest, we, we, yeah, okay, we've been doing the group texts every day. We've been doing Zoom calls, but you know it's not the same. And we miss each other. So I was trying to have one of the local restaurants get us in, and they're like, nope. I'm like, okay, so I may actually um, cater a brunch at my house. Of course, we're going to do a social distancing within six feet of each other. Uh, but I just want to, because this is how I see this, you know, number one, I need to be okay. Like you need to be okay as a leader. All the leaders need to be okay who run organizations, teams, whatever, right? Then our families need to be okay. Like our, my family is okay right now. We have our ups and downs, but they're solid. And then who's going after the next, like the team, team needs to be okay. So I want to, I want to touch my team. I want to sit down with them. I want to have some drinks. Not like we need to drink or anything like that. But uh, so, yeah, that's what I'm planning to do. I, I think I have it all planned out. As long as they're comfortable, I think they're comfortable because they're, they want this too, you know, they want like interaction and whatnot. And, and then that, that's it, man. That's, that's what I, of course, I would like to go shopping because I'm a girl, but <laughs> whatever. I don't need anything anymore. Yeah, and, right. Like preparing for the client event on the 9th, it's going to be like, we need to prepare that in advance, which we will. We have two weeks, but it's going to be a big push, you know. Um, 
big energy towards towards that. Awesome. Well, you crushed it. I'm so happy that that we connected on this. Uh, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Well, yeah, keep it up. Where can people, if people want to send you a deal or follow you or learn more about you, where should they go? Yeah, my, my Facebook and, of course, my TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if you tag my, tag my page and tag me, I'm very responsive most of the time if I'm not forgetting because I have severe ADD, like most real estate agents. Yeah, right. Uh, but if anyone has any questions or if anyone needs to probe a brain, I'm here for, for you guys. Um, I, I run business on a smaller scale, but there's definitely some things that works for me and I know it will work for you if you trust the process. Yes, thank you, Lana. See you soon. Uh, thank you. Isn't that incredible? I got a bunch of ideas out of that episode. If you did, share it with a friend. Like us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and LinkedIn. And we'll see you next time on The Hustling Agent.